Have you ever wondered what's inside of a drag queen's closet? Absolutely nothing, because I keep my costumes in the basement. Follow me. Don't be scared. It's totally safe down here. Woo! Oh, God. In the not-so-distant past, drag was so criminalized that people had to hide their costumes and their wigs in literal secret compartments under the floorboards. But now that drag is out of the closet, we can show off all of our beautiful things. We don't have to pretend that drag is just a job or just something that we do for work. This is part of the unique way that queer people express themselves, that we imagine and create um, in distinctive ways, and we should take pride in that. No matter how hard conservative opposition may try, they can't stamp out drag. But let's hope that we don't have to go into hiding and deny the full power of what it is that we do and the beauty of it too. Not that this is the most glamorous place to show it off in the world, but it is mine. I try to give the illusion of being organized by just shoving things into labeled boxes, like pumps decorative, pumps neutral, pumps colorful, gloves, hats, jewelry, feathers. Well, this is the, it's the season 10 crowning look just in a box. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. I keep all of my costumes organized by color. We've got the reds and the purples, greens and blues. One of my favorite dresses is my Gollum dress. I felt like the final reveal to Gollum from an engaged um, housewife also obsessed with rings should be the most beautiful. Like Gollum is the most full, most glamorous, uh, most feminine realization of the character. So this is just so, so beautiful made by Florence de Lee. It's very, very heavy. It's not drag unless you're a little in pain. This is a favorite piece made by Puretta Victory, and it is a shirtwaist made entirely out of vintage lace made by my great-grandmother Goldie, who immigrated to New York and uh, worked in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, one of the first ready-to-wear factories in the world where there was a huge fire and many young women like my grandmother were killed. She actually survived because she was late to work that day. More about that in my book. And I just love celebrating the love-hate relationship with fashion that really we should all have. Made a matching skirt to go with it. Didn't quite have this much vintage lace, so the rest we found on Etsy. A lot of people had grandmothers making this pattern. <laughs> then over here, this is another favorite. This is the first dress that Diego Montoya made for me, and he made it with a matching red headpiece. When I met him, he really mainly made masks that covered the whole face, and I loved them so much and wanted to know what that would look like as a dress. It's pieced together like you would a sculpture or something. Many, many layers sewed on top of each other. Feathers, gold, gorgeousness. These are my favorite colors. Red, fuchsia, and gold. Oh God, this is really painful as well in a sexy way. This is probably my favorite piece from the Smoke and Mirrors tour. It was intended as a curtain call outfit, but I could never get it on in time, so it was a meet and greet outfit. It features a phoenix being reborn. This was originally made for the Folly Berger performance that was scheduled before COVID. It was part of a series where I was wearing a lot of different birds. This one is painted by Kelsey Short. The jewelry I made to go with the phoenix dress. But this really did have a rebirth because I did get to wear this two years later when Smoke and Mirrors finally went to the Folie Berger and played two sold out performances in Paris. So I just love this one. It's like a 1920s cocoon coat dress. Everything is quilted on. 
with beads and different colors of velvet and some jewels. This would have been great a few months ago, but pink is really overdone these days. Just kidding. I do have lots of beautiful vintage too, like this one, one of my first drag dresses. I'm never gonna throw this out. Rigged for an onstage strip tease. Um, and I even prefer my own clothes when they feel worn out <laughs> and used. They're so much more fun to wear, less precious. God dang it, my God. <laughs> I keep all the most sentimental pieces inside of this closet, within the closet, like the tree from Smoke and Mirrors. My Wild is the Wind performance. Oh, I miss wearing this. My favorite part of the show every night. The lettuce dress from Smoke and Mirrors. Like our take on the quintessential drag queen ruffle reveal coat. You come out all bundled and then you drop it and reveal your dress. Um, but this kind of turned out like a gorgeous salad. This is my Ukrainian Cossack inspired look from Drag Race for the faux fur challenge. Everything is made of very, very cheap faux fur or uh, pom-poms. Now, even though my family is from Ukraine, this is not my people. We, uh, the national Ukrainians actually forced my family out due to anti-Semitic pogroms, but today these costumes have become a symbol of anti-imperialism. And uh, I think that shares a great deal in common with the mission of drag, so I stand by these looks. This fabric is fantastic. Like Charlie's Angels, I only accept three hair colors. This is a particular favorite that I haven't really worn yet. It's uh, inspired by 80s mall photo hair made by Wigs and Grace. It's really a nightmare, <laughs> but I love it. These are my hip pads and shoulder pads and breast pads and compression garments and corsets. I love fullness and softness and curves, but a little boxiness and flatness too. I think there's so many different ways that our bodies can be beautiful and I want to try them all. I think a big part of drag is turning your own body parts into tools for creating either more extreme genders or things beyond gender. That was very empowering for me as someone who felt for a long time like what I had was holding me back in some way and drag taught me that it's actually it's just a tool for becoming what i can dream of and what i can imagine and all the pads have a big role in that my one and only breastplate was actually tattooed with a tattoo gun by my uh, tattoo artist tessa this is very private can't believe i'm showing this <laughs> not usually a topless girl but you know but if you're looking at them, they're looking at you. I think that's what you should remember. My grandma Josephine's haunted porcelain doll. What would a gay man's home be without a creepy doll? At least one. We sometimes do perform gendered cliches in drag, but it's definitely not an endorsement of them. It's just not always a deconstruction of them either. Sometimes we are just restylizing the way things are. And through that little bit of extra style, it gives space for people to be freer with who they are and to give more freedom to others. There's nothing threatening or dangerous or even really that shocking about it. I think it's just a more humanistic way to treat other people and to treat your own self. This is my Gollum wig. Beautiful human hair. I'm getting into making my own wigs, as you can see. So, should I make a wig making tutorial now that I'm such an expert? Let me know in the comments. Of course. Van der Van Odds, Barbara Swan mask from Nikon's the Musical. She went through about 10 and distributed them as gifts at the end of the show, and 
I deeply cherish mine. Absolutely gorgeous. I love looking like an alien. I often get that feedback from random conservatives online that I look like some kind of alien in drag or a devil. Uh, obviously not afraid to look like a devil either. I think for, for them they mean it as an insult, but then I have to remind myself that aliens and devils are really fictional characters that were drawn and designed specifically to look like queer people with the idea that being in between or outside of gender should be something scary. And once you step away from that fear, you realize it's a fantastic look. These are some favorite props. The TV set from Night Guns the Musical painted by Janelle Crone. We came up with this idea to hold a real TV inside that would show an interpreter and captioning inside of it to be accessible in a new way for live theater. But they were affected by the action on the stage. So when the alien came in, they, their power went out as well. It was really fun. Here is the magic box from Smoke and Mirrors for an illusion of chopping myself in half. And this was painted by Kelsey Short, who designed the logo and did the t-shirt and incorporates lots of different references. Have a Dada-inspired hand. Gold urns on the red background are a nod to the Harlem Ball, where they filmed parts of Paris is Burning. But death is a big theme in Smoke and Mirrors as well, so it just it seemed right. And of course, my child, Skelly Velour. We got this. And it was a black skeleton that we painted to do a little commentary on the loss of Quibi and the Nightgowns TV show that went along with it. Um, oh God. But I think it's important to laugh in the face of your tragedies and mistakes and still find ways to move forward and innovate. And embracing death is a big theme in my life. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. Enjoy your clothes. Oh, Skelly. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>